Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you several methods of how to export multi-tracks and stems from your Logic Pro projects. So why would you want to do this? Well, it's not uncommon to collaborate with people that use different DAWs, different plugins, and different instruments. So in these cases, it's not always possible to just send your collaborator a full Logic project. They may want your instruments and editing and effects all rendered into the audio files. So first let's talk about multi-tracks versus stems and what's the difference. Multi-tracks are individual tracks that have been exported from Logic. Essentially, there's just one instrument per track. So this could be lead vocal, backing vocal one, backing vocal two, kick drum, snare drum, guitar one, guitar two, etc. So these are individual instruments. Stems are when you combine certain instruments together and export them as a single unit in a stereo audio file, like a whole group of backing vocals, all of the drum tracks grouped together, all of the synths, all of the guitars, etc. So that's what a stem is. If you're working with a mixing engineer, it's nice to keep everything in a multi-track format and remove any effects from your multi-tracks so that the mixing engineer can do things their way. And that's what you're hiring them for after all. So you don't wanna have a bunch of mixing that's already baked into your multi-tracks. Whereas stems are typically used when working with collaborators that don't necessarily want to redo the mixing or sound design, or maybe someone is doing stem mastering or stem mixing for you. So the situation is going to determine whether you want to use multi-tracks or stems, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to export both. But before I get into the tutorial, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. Boombox.io is a brand new audio file collaboration tool that's perfect for musicians, bands, producers, mixing engineers, really anyone who needs to work on music or audio projects in a collaborative way. Boombox.io allows you to upload your tracks and receive timestamped feedback from collaborators on your project, and all of this is handled securely on the Boombox website. Only collaborators you invite to your project can listen to your tracks and leave feedback. If you're ready to give Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so generally speaking, there are three different methods I use to export tracks from my projects. One, I can use the export all tracks function. Two, I can just export certain tracks and track stacks for stems. And then three, I can just manually bounce stems. So I'll start with the simplest method, and that's the export all tracks function. So I have an instrumental beat here, and you'll see that it's relatively simple in terms of its routing. Just about all of the tracks are going to the stereo output. Most of these don't have any sort of buses or sends on them. I'm not using any aux tracks, with the exception of this very top track, this synth group track. And this is a track stack with three instruments inside and two aux tracks inside. Now, the thing I need to tell you about aux tracks that's very important when exporting multi-tracks is that aux tracks do not export with the export all function unless they are routed to a track stack and then you export that track stack. So when I export this, the track stack synth group is going to get exported and that's going to include all three of these instruments plus the two aux tracks that I'm using for time-based effects. These are both reverbs. Now, because I'm using this export all function, in addition to exporting the track stack, it's also gonna give me another sort of dry copy of these three synthesizers separated. So when you use the export all function and you have sends on these tracks, these sends are not going to be included in your export. So you just have to be very cognizant of that. I don't have any effects on my output other than a gain adjustment. And that's really the way you want it for this. Although when you export tracks, the effects that are included with the track are only the ones that are on the track itself. This does not include things that are on the stereo output. So even my gain plugin is not going to be included in the final bounce for any of these instruments. Okay, so here's how you use this function. It's very, very simple. You can see I've got a total of 24 tracks if you include the stereo output. I'm gonna go up to File, then go down to Export, and then select All Tracks as Audio Files. And you can use the shortcut Shift Command E for this. This will bring up a separate dialog where you can choose where you want to save these. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just create a new folder up here on my desktop. I'll click New Folder, and the name of the song is Skylines, and I'll just label this Multi Tracks. Okay, so I'm going to save everything in this Multi Tracks folder. For the range, this determines the export range of each track. So if you choose Extend File Length to Project End, this is going to bounce the entire project range from the very beginning to the very end for each track. If you choose Trim Silence at File End, if you've got a track that maybe is only in one spot, like maybe here, and then it's not used for the rest of the song, Logic will automatically trim the end of that file so you don't have all this extra silence at the end of the audio file. That's what that does. And then if you want to select a specific range to export, you can use the cycle range the same way I demonstrated in the previous video. So I'm going to use the trim silence function. Then for save format, you can choose AIFF, WAV, or CAF files. I'm just going to go with WAV. You can select your bit depth. I'll just stick with 24. This one right here is grayed out because I don't have any multi-output software instruments. But if you're using a multi-out instrument like Drum Machine Designer, you can opt to export the entire Drum Machine Designer kit as one file, or you can have one file for each of the multi-output tracks within Drum Machine Designer. So that's what this option is for. You can choose to bypass effects plugins on the tracks. I do not want to do this because I want to include the effects I have on the tracks. Including audio tail will ensure that if you have any instruments that sort of cut off and their reverb tails sort of linger for a while or decay for a while, this will include those reverb tails. So I always turn this on, especially if I'm bouncing tracks with their effects. You can choose to include volume and pan automation, which I'm going to do. You can choose to include tempo information, which I'm going to do. And you can choose to normalize or include overload protection. I'm going to go ahead and add the overload protection just in case I have some tracks that are overloading as individual tracks. Now, when it comes to file naming, Logic has a really cool way of handling this down here. You can drag and drop any of these elements, and that is how each track will be named. So, for example, if I want the track number to come first, then the track name, I can just drag track number and name next to each other. If I want a space between, you know, the number and the name, you just add a space. Maybe I want a hyphen. You can also add custom text. There's this little custom box down here where you can type in text. So if I want custom text after the track name, I can add it here, maybe MT for multi-track. Maybe I want to put a space in between these or an underscore or maybe a hyphen. That's how you can do that. So I'm going to omit the custom text for now. And I'm just going to do track number, space, hyphen, space, track name. And this is the naming convention that'll be used. So then I'll just click export and wait a bit for it to export all of these tracks. Okay, so everything's been exported. I've got my finder window here with my multi-tracks folder. And if I open this up, you will see all of the files inside. You can see some of these are smaller than others. And that's because of that trimming. So when you trim the files, it's going to get rid of any silence at the end of the files, therefore saving you space on your computer. Now, look really close at the track numbers, and you'll see what I was talking about earlier about how it'll export a track stack, like synth group one here. It, it exports the three synth tracks, two, three, and four. So here they are, two, three, and four. But you can see that tracks five and six, which were the aux tracks, are not exported. So if I go to one of these individual synth tracks and play them. So that's completely dry. There's no time-based effects on it. But if I go to the synth group and play that one. So that one's including those two aux tracks that were inside of the track stack. So again, you just have to be very aware of that. And you may not even use these three dry synth tracks. You may even just go ahead and trash those and use the synth group. Also, what's not exported is the stereo output. So you can see that track 24 is not included here. Now let's create another folder. I'm going to call this one Skylines Stems. And I'm going to show you another way to export where you can sort of manually pick which tracks you want to export. So for example, if I just want to export just the synth group and nothing else, and I want to export this as a stem. Essentially, it's a stem with all three synths plus the two time-based effects. You just select that track, go to File, then go to Export, 
And this time you're gonna select one track as audio file, and that's Command E. But watch what happens when you select more than one track or track stack. Like for example, this is my bass, that can be its own stem. The kicks, I got three kick tracks. Maybe I want to combine all three of the kick tracks together. I mean, really those are functioning like one instrument even though they're three different tracks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these to a track stack. So I'll just go up to create track stack, add a summing stack, and I'll just call this kicks. Then I've got these like drum loops here. This is sort of like the main drum groove. I'm just going to create another track stack for this one, and I'm gonna call this main beat. Then I have eight effects tracks. I'm gonna put all of these in a stack, and I'll just call this effects. And then lastly, I have two synth pads at the bottom. I'm gonna add these to a stack as well, and I'll just call this pads. So now I have, instead of 24 channels, I have one, two, three, four, five, six stems that I want to export. So now I can just select all six of these, and again, it's a combination of stacks and an individual track. You go up to File, Export, and then down here, it'll say six tracks as audio files, or just press Command-E. Then I can go find my stems folder. Everything in this dialog is the same as I demonstrated before. I'm going to include my audio tail, and then click Export. And I'm using all the same naming conventions as well. Okay, so these are all exported. You can see I have six stems here, one for the synth group, one for the synth bass, one for the kicks, one for the main beat, one for the effects, and one for the synth pads. So this might be the format you use if you're sending things over to a collaborator and you wanna sort of bake in all of your effects and you don't wanna lose any of the sort of relative balance between these stems, but you wanna give your collaborator a little bit of control to balance things rather than just giving them a stereo two track. You know, maybe they're tracking vocals on top of this and they want things in a more consolidated format. Another way you can use this is you can create track stacks just like I've done here, but then use the export all tracks function instead of the export function and you'll get stems along with multi-tracks. Now, if you want everything in your mix to be sort of baked into the stems, including the stereo output, including aux tracks, there's another way you can do this just by manually bouncing stems. But to do this, I'm gonna to need to move over to a more complex project, so I'll do that right now. Okay, so I've got a more complex mix pulled up here. This is a fully mixed and mastered song. I've got a lot of you know different organizational things going on with different track stacks, with multiple backing vocals tucked into track stacks. I've got all these vocal effects here. I've got effects on my stereo output for mastering. So sometimes when I'm done with a project like this, I might want to export stems for the entire song that have all of the processing and mixing and even the mastering chain baked into the stems so that if at some point in the future, if I wanna come back to this project or maybe remix it or have an instrumental version or an acapella version, I have the stems ready to go. Now, again, you can do this with or without the stereo output effects. If you don't want the mastering effects, just bypass these and then export your stems. Now, let me play you a little bit of the song uh, so you can get a sense of what I'm working with here. The lead vocal has a lead vocal track that's tuned, a lead vocal track that's not tuned, and then there's some affected uh, sort of vocal things in here. So really the lead vocal is its own stem. But on top of that, I've got five effects tracks that are also being used on the vocals and the backing vocals. And there's a lot of big, you know, group backing vocals that are stacked up like this. We've hit the bottom about a thousand times. Never again. Just stay you 
fall I'm never gonna let you fade away I'm never gonna let you fall And you can hear all of those time-based effects that are on the vocal. So for something like this, what I might opt to do is I may mute everything that I don't want in the stem. So I'm muting all of the tracks, maybe except for my lead vocal track, and then all of the time-based effects that are being used on this lead vocal. Let's just give this a quick listen. We've hit the bottom about a thousand times Never again Just stay right here with me When we tear down all these walls Just stay right here by my side I'm never gonna let you fall I'm never gonna let you fade away Ooh, baby Never gonna let, never gonna let you fade away and I've got all this like intricate automation in here for the vocal delays. So there's a lot of elements that I might want to include with my vocal stem. So why did I mute everything instead of just soloing what I want? Well, if you solo a bunch of tracks, sometimes what can happen is aux tracks, especially ones that have pre-fader sends going to them, sometimes you can get these erroneous aux tracks in your stems. So rather than soloing the lead vocal stack and soloing all of my aux tracks for my vocal effects, I'm gonna mute everything that I don't want. So then I can just simply hit Command B to bounce and then bounce this as a stem. So I'll go with Wave, 24-bit, 44-1, interleaved. I'm not down converting the bit depth here, so no need to include dithering. And you know maybe I want some overload protection on there as well. I'll just click OK, I'll make a folder, and I'll call this stems, and I'll just call this lead vocal stem. Now, again, because there's so many effects on this all at once, it's gonna take a lot longer to export. It's gonna take quite a bit longer to go through and manually export these stems. But like I said, I'll often do this after I finish a project, just so I can have a version of the project that has some separation to it, in addition to maybe saving you know, an, an, a full multi-track version of it as well. Also, if you compose beats and songs and backing tracks for commercial music libraries for people to license, most of these libraries will request fully mixed and mastered stems as well. And then once I'm done with the lead vocal stem, I can just mute that, and then I can move on to the next group of instruments that I want to bounce out as a stem. One last thing I'll show you here that's probably the more common use for this is exporting an instrumental stem and then an acapella vocal stem. So an isolated vocal with just the vocals and then another uh, stem with just the instrumental. Or maybe what you might do is do an instrumental backing vocals and lead vocals. You know, if you're gonna take this song and perform it live with a backing track, maybe you want those backing vocals in there, in the backing track, but not the lead vocal. One of the really cool things about Logic Pro 10.7.5 is that you can now put a summing stack inside of a summing stack. So what I could do is I could select all of my vocal tracks, for example, and all of the vocal effects, and I can add these to a new summing stack. So maybe I'll just call this vocals, and then I can take all of the instrumental elements, including all of the effects, the drums, the bass, all the synths, and even though there are some stacks in here, I can still add these to another track stacks. I'm going to add these to a summing stack, and then I'll just call this instrumental. And now what I have is one stack with the entire instrumental in it, and another stack with the entire vocal in it. And I can just mute the vocals, and I can bounce out an instrumental stem. So I'll just call this instrumental. Okay, so now I've got an instrumental stem bounced out. I can just mute the instrumental, and now I will bounce out an all vocal stem. Or you could break this up into backing vocals and lead vocals. It's completely up to you. And here we go. So I've got my all vocals stem with all of the lead and backing vocals in it. Being out of time, less. I told you that when you finally wake up, I'll be gone. With all the time-based effects baked right in, and then I've got my instrumental.
So that's three different ways you can export multi-tracks or stems in Logic Pro. In the next video, we're going to wrap up the Logic Pro Essentials portion of this series, and I'm gonna give you an overview of the Logic Remote app, which is a really cool way to control Logic remotely, record yourself, you can control live loops, you can use it as a control surface, there's all sorts of cool things you can do with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.